so now students after standing uh, understanding a lot of concepts and also solving numericals on the basis of the estimation of rainfall depth now let's come to the new topic in which we will be discussing about probable extreme rainfall event and probable maximum precipitation right so if you understand in engineering mathematics if you clearly understand the concept of probability this concept is very easy right so first of all i will talk about a term that is known as a return period now return period now before even return uh, explaining the return period now let me first of all tell you now why there is need of studying this you can say this topic right so whenever you are designing a hydraulic structure let us say you are designing a dam or let us say you are designing a barrage or any hydraulic structure it can be a weir also right so we have spillways in hydraulic structure right what are the spillways uh, if your extra water comes it will be spilled through right uh, it will be taken away right those are known as a spill spillways right so wherever you are designing your spillways you have to design your spillways based on the probable extreme rainfall event now for example you are designing your dam let us say for a for 50 years or for 100 years then you have to use the meteorological data data with the help of a uh, you can say meteorologist right who can tell you that in past 100 years or past 200 years whatever data he has what is the maximum rainfall in that area what is the maximum rainfall and what is the return period of that rainfall or the return period of that flood you can see right so that you can you can get an idea that okay i have to design my spillway for this much of flood level so that you it has the minimum you can say minimum chance or minimum probability to get exceeded for example let us say that you have designed you uh, you have got the data you have got the data of a particular catchment area let us say here you wanted to make a dam let us say here you wanted to make a dam at this position so first of all you have to get as much data as possible it is preferred to get data of past 100 years right if it you are getting if it is more than that that is also very good right now in the past 100 years you have observed that this catchment has had observed a rainfall of 10 centimeter in the year let us say 1910 and uh, let us say today it is 2020 so in 110 years this type of rainfall this type of average mean precipitation has not occurred so you will design your you can say that particular dam or the particular spillway for maximum this much of you can say precipitation you have to calculate that for this catchment area if this type of precipitation comes what will be the flood level maximum flood level again you will take some factor of safety and you will design your spillway right now the question is why can't we design it for 20 centimeter 30 centimeter let's take it maximum the thing is that you will waste a lot of money because being a civil engineer economy has also be to, has also to be taken into consideration it does not matter uh, if the maximum rainfall was 10 cm in the year 1910 so you will design for 20 cm 30 cm so that there is not at all any possibility of exceeding that you can do that also if you have a lot of money right but being uh, being in a country like india which is a developing country so your economic aspect has also to be taken into consideration clear okay so what we have to do is that we have to get the data from a good meteorologist of past 100 years or 150 years whatever maximum we have right and we have to see up after how many years this particular type of storm or rainfall is occurring and that period is known as the return period let us say that this rainfall of 10 centimeter for the let's say it came in the year 1910 and again this rainfall came in the year 2010 then i will say that the probability or you can say the return period return period of this type of rainfall this type of storm it is 100 years it means that in 100 years this type of uh, storm is coming at least once that is the return period of the storm so i have to check that if i'm designing this dam for let's say next 50 years or 100 years so what is the probability of exceeding that in that particular you can see here Clear? you have to see the probability the probability should be minimum because if suppose by chance you do not let's say design your hydraulic structure for this flood data or this data what will happen if suppose the precipitation falls which is 
above which is beyond your design data what will happen your structure will collapse it will have a huge impact on the economy it will have a huge impact on the you can say people's life a lot of uh, lot of people will can be killed right it will also have a huge impact on the morale of the morale of the country that uh, it will have a global impact that the engineers of this particular country they cannot build they can say they, they cannot build good structures they will also have a moral impact also right so there are many impacts on failure of any structure whether uh, recently a uh, few bridges they fell in uh, west bank also it, it had a, you can say negative perception all over the country right so th that is also very bad right uh, being a civil engineer okay okay now let's move to this concept of return period right so return period i have uh, uh, i have made you understand about what return period is now let's come to the next concept about the probability of a return period right now let me rub this right so i hope you are getting it because in 2020 also uh, a question came from this topic the return period topic it was shift one or shift two one question came from this topic okay and it was a very easy question okay now the probability of that particular return period of that particular storm will be equal to one upon t where t is the return period return period now for example i uh, let me give an example let us say i have a storm of 10 centimeter depth which occurs continuously for 24 hours but this storm this storm particular storm it comes once in 10 years once in 10 years right so what will the probability that it will occur once in 10 years so probability will be equal to 1 upon 10 or, or in a particular year of, of happening this event is 1 upon 10 now for next 10 years for next 10 years how how many times will this storm can occur? Now, if in one year it has a probability of one upon ten, in next ten, in next hundred years, let us say this can occur for ten times. Simple, right? Now let's um, uh, let me make you understand the Bernoulli concept, right? Now the Bernoulli concept is now if the probability of occurrence of this uh, storm is one by t, then the probability of this storm not to occur not to occur will be equal to 1 minus 1 by t right okay now i can say that let us say p p is the success probability probability of success right so probability of success for a storm of return period t will be equal to 1 by t clear and the probability of failure q is the failure it means that this storm will not occur will be equal to 1 minus 1 by t simple Clear? Okay, and I will also say that P plus Q is equals to 1. P plus Q is equals to 1. Now let's apply the Bernoulli trials. So Bernoulli, by the help of the Bernoulli trials, I can say that, let me rub this, right? Now with the help of the Bernoulli trials, I can say that a very important formula which you must have studied in your engineering mathematics probability is also that same formula. The formula is that if you want to determine your probability in for r years for r years it will be equal to n c r p raised to the power r into q raised to the power n minus r simple right it means that uh, let us say that this storm had a probability let us say of uh, you can say it had a return period of let us say 10 years it means that for this storm to occur in one year, it has a probability of 1 by 10 for one year, right? That will be P. And what will be Q? Q will be equal to 1 minus 1 by 10. That is 9 by 10. So suppose that in question it is asked to you, what is the probability of this storm to occur twice, two times, right? It means that probability of this storm to occur two times will be equal to, uh, if let us say for ten, next 10 years, right? That is 10C2 into P, that is 1 upon 10 raised to power 2 into 9 upon 10 raised to the power uh, 10 minus 2, that is 8. And so, okay. Now, what is the probability of, let's say, occurring of this event, uh, not occurring of this event in, let's say, next 10 years, right? So, for next 10 years, the probability of not occurring of this event will be equal to 
it means that this is not occurring even once right this is not occurring even once right so the probability of occurring of an event is this now probability of not occurring of this event that is r is equals to 0 so it will be equal to nc0 that is 10 c0 into 1 upon 10 raised to the power 0 into 9 upon 10 raised to the power 10 minus 0 that is 10 this is 1 this is 1 right it will be equal to 0 0.9 raised to the power 10 simple the next type of question that can be asked is that the probability of uh, the probability of uh, this is strong at least once at least once in next 10 years right so for at least once now probability at least r greater than or equal to 1 at least once right so it will be equal to 10 c0 10 c1 into 1 upon 10 raised to the power 1 into 9 upon 10 raised to the power 10 minus 1 9 plus 10 c2 1 upon 10 raised to the power 2 into 9 upon 10 raised to the power 8 plus so on right up to the 10th event or if, obviously it will be very difficult so what we have to do let us assume that uh, let us first of all calculate the probability of this event not exceeding even ones right not exceeding even that is probability of r equal to 0 so it will be equal to the same way we got that is 0.9 raised to the power 10 now what you do is that from a total event minus that event right that is 1 minus 0 0.9 raised to the power 10 and hence this is your probability of r greater than or equal to 1 this is the probability for a particular event occurring at least once okay so this is the basic mathematics clear no need to mug up the formula just remember this Bernoulli theorem Bernoulli trials simple and you will be able to answer every question. So similar question came in gate 2020 also, similar question, right? The probability of this event uh, occurring at least once, it was uh, this type of question. So first of all, you get calculate the probability of that event not occurring even once, and then you subtract it from one, right? For example, if you are greater than or equal to one, that will be equal to one minus probability of R is equal to zero. That is the same thing, okay? okay? So I hope that you have understood this concept. Now let us move to the next concept that is the probable maximum precipitation, right? So probable maximum precipitation means that for a particular catchment area, again I'm repeating, for a particular catchment area, what is the maximum, you can say, precipitation that can occur in that area that is known as the probable maximum precipitation of that particular area, right? So probable maximum precipitation of a particular catchment area can be determined by two ways. First one is the meteorological method and second one is the statistical method, right? So meteorological method, we get the data of past 100 years, 200 years, whatever we have, we draw some regression lines and we get the value. And second one is the statistical method. So statistical method has given us a formula, which I would like to tell you that, which is a very important formula and has been asked many times in examinations in theoretical, theoretical question type, right? So this question has been asked that the probable maximum precipitation is given by which formula? So four options will be there. You have to uh, uh, correct, correct the uh, correct option, right? You have to tick the correct option, right? So probable maximum precipitation. <coughs> Sorry, probable maximum pre precipitation it is given by P bar. P bar is the average precipitation plus K into sigma. And sigma is the standard deviation. This is the mean precipitation. Mean precipitation or mean rainfall right and k is a factor this is also known as the frequency factor frequency factor it depends on a lot of parameters like you can say the particular meteorological data it also depends upon the return period a lot of factors so if question comes k will be given to you in question itself right so p is bar is the average precipitation sigma is the standard deviation and k is the frequency factor so probable maximum precipitation for a particular catchment area is given by this formula okay there is another uh, term which has been asked in examination is the world's uh, that is one of the world's uh, highest precipitation right world's highest world's highest precipitation 
right? It is also calculated based on the previous data, and we draw. You can say log log curve on log log curve. We draw some lines, and we get the equation of the lines, right? So world highest precipitation is given by forty two point one six into d raised to the power zero point four seven five four seven five. What is d? D is the duration of a particular precipitation in hours, right? D is the duration in hours. Duration in hours. That is the world's highest precipitation is given by this formula. W O R L D S. World's highest precipitation is given by this formula. Okay. So I hope that you have understood the concept of probable extreme rainfall event. and the probable maximum precipitation also the world's highest precipitation right how it came we get the data and we plot the data in log log scale log log scale we get plot the data in log log scale from there we get a straight line and we get the equation of the line the equation of the line comes out to be this okay so i hope students that you have understood the probable extreme rainfall event and the probable maximum precipitation now let's move to the next topic in the next topic i will be explaining you some numerical based on these you can say these concepts right with the numericals uh, uh, the numericals which i think that we uh, are very you can say very good numericals so we'll be solving some numericals also to further strengthen our concept based on these two concepts thank you